Uh, want to welcome to the program Yulene New. She is a Manhattan Assemblywoman and a candidate in the upcoming primary. It is Tuesday, August 23rd. It's only a, a couple of business days away uh, uh, for uh, the Congress. She is running for the new congressional district, uh, the 10th congressional district. Um, and uh, uh, Yulene, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Sam. So I should just say, uh, up at the front of the, the program, I made this point. Uh, I'll, I'll make it again. Um, when this race started, I, um, you know, there was, you know, three, I think, arguably Elizabeth Holtzman, too. Although I think that, like, you know, I, I, looking for um, sort of some some new folks in Congress. But uh, there were three candidates that I felt like um, uh, if I was voting in this uh, race, I would vote for um, any one of these three. Uh, but the one that I wanted to make sure did not win, uh, particularly after de Blasio uh, dropped out, was uh, Goldman. I mean, he is a, uh, you know, a, a basically a corporate uh, corporatist. This is a very progressive district. And, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I think uh, the, the world of Mondaire Jones and, um, and had the opportunity to interview him in the past. Uh, I think he's done some good work in, uh, in Congress. And uh, Carlina Rivera, I think, is a great uh, councilwoman. But for me... Um, it is about making sure a progressive wins this seat and uh, Goldman is stopped. And the polling suggests you're that person. <laughs> yes, I, I think that I am. Um, I, I'm, I, I believe that I'm the only viable candidate in the race that's not taking real estate or corporate money. Um, this presents the sharpest possible contrast with Dan Goldman, who is literally attempting to use his generational wealth and cash with uh, real estate dollars, corporate interests, including Trump's super donors to buy this election. Um, and, you know, he's very, very deeply self-funded. Um, this community needs a leader who understands, obviously, the diverse needs of the district, not someone who um, literally came in from the Hamptons to run for Congress as a hobby. Um, and it is concerning that, um, you know, Dan struggles actually to answer basic questions about the district. And since I've represented this district for the last six years in the state assembly, um, you know, 100% of my assembly district is actually inside of the new New York 10. And so I am the proud pro-abortion uh, pro rights, pro-immigrant, pro healthcare values of this district. Um, and so I think that it's very, very reflective of our district. And I think that, you know, we don't need somebody who's inconsistent on abortion, talked glowingly about working with ICE and opposes Medicare for all. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is I mean, in my mind, this is a hands on uh, all hands on deck a moment because it is really okay. important in, in in congressional districts where we can we have the opportunity. I mean, let, let, I mean let's face it, like the the. I was, I was to add up in, the, in just in the polling and again, you know, the uh, polls, you know, uh, are polls, uh, but there are only data point. We would add up, uh, you know, uh, the, the progressive vote in this thing. It would be a landslide. I mean, five times over, five times over. And uh, but because of the nature of, of this and, and, and frankly, because of uh, Sean uh, Maloney, uh, big footing uh, Mondaire Jones. And, and frankly, that's 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 another topic for another day. Uh, <laughs> but um, but uh, this is where we're at. And you mentioned a couple of things, um, uh, real estate money. And you mentioned uh, abortion. I want to talk about uh, let's start with abortion. Um, the uh, New York Times ended up endorsing Goldman. And but what? It was uh, fascinating to see just how weak he is on abortion for yes. someone. I mean, really, for any New York uh, congressperson, uh, but particularly for this seat. And yes. this is seems to be like the key um, uh, issue in 2022 and I'm not I wouldn't be surprised if it's the key issue in 2024 and we're going to need it seems to me in the house um, representatives across the board who are as uh, invested in abortion rights as possible yes even Kansas gets it more than him yeah. I mean, our fundamental our fundamental right to bodily autonomy is literally under attack. And this is a life or death issue. And we are already seeing the devastating impact of abortion bans in communities across this country. We watched as a woman literally bled out and then died. And so we need to pass 
Women's Health Protection Act on the federal level. Um, New York actually uh, is already stepping up to the plate. We ensured that we can serve as a haven for people in uh, need of abortion care. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we are unapologetically champions of abortion rights in Congress. And I think that, you know, Right now, we need to understand how we got to this point, right? The Republicans have spent decades engineering a judicial coup. And then they've gutted abortion rights. They've gutted gun safety. They've gutted climate policy. They've made clear that this is just the beginning. And we know that right now it's not going to be, and this is what enrages me the most, but we know that it's not going to be, you know, wealthy, white, privileged, cishet women who are going to be able to, you know, get the health care they need whenever they need it, wherever they need to go to get it right. It's going to be the people of color. It's going to be low income folks, It's going to be rural people who are literally going to um, not be able to reach health care fast enough. Right. Um, it's going to be people with disabilities that are going to be hurting the most. Right. And so we have to talk about equity as well. And in New York State, we actually passed the Equal Rights Amendment also. And we have to make sure that we have equal access to abortion rights. Uh, earlier in the program today, we played a clip from a South Carolina uh, lawmaker who had begun to uh, sort of dawned on him after he got a call from a doctor on the implication of his, of his vote on the, um, the six week, uh, you know, the so-called heartbeat uh, um, uh, a ban of abortion in South Carolina. And he heard this harrowing story of yeah. a 19 year old uh, woman who, you know, could have easily died. Uh, because of that, uh, that ban. And so uh, this is going to really, I think, move to the forefront. But let's talk about uh, in terms of New York, which is really important um, uh, in New York politics, and particularly in, in uh, New York City politics, that's mm -hmm. uh, real estate funding. And um, yeah. I was just reading um, that the so-called New York Progressive PAC is a PAC. Well, do you, uh, are you familiar with the New York Progressive PAC? Uh, it just uh, was basically made, I believe. Uh, sorry about that. It was just basically made um, a couple of uh, days ago, I believe. Yes. Um, and, and they are my... made by the people who put together the Common Sense Pack. And the Common Sense Pack, uh, I, apparently it was a guy named Jeffrey Lev. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. No about worries. That. It happens. It happens. We have far greater technical problems than that, I can assure you. But this guy, Jeffrey Lev, uh, and uh, was this pack, essentially, it's a different pack, but, uh, you know, just basically a different name, um, is involved in uh, a real estate developer pack that targeted uh, DSA city council candidates uh, in yeah. the city. Um, they are uh, the same interests that have gone after a bunch of of, of, of progressive and uh, DSA folks. Yes. Um, and this is uh, the the one person apparently they are really gunning for seems to be you. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, there's a lot of reasons why. And I think it's because they fear that I am not beholden to real estate dollars. <laughs> And, and like, but, but I mean, explain to people the, I mean, obviously you're in Congress, you're not, you know, you're not voting on necessarily, I guess, on, uh, on, on, you know, uh, land use, land or... use in, but it, it, it really makes a difference. I mean, we saw AOC was, you know, um, at least uh, one of the, the, the big names and drawing a lot of attention to, you know, uh, the big giveaway to Amazon. Uh, and basically stop that in its tracks. I mean, is that what they're afraid of? They're afraid of a, of a, of a congresswoman who is going to draw attention to that type of like real estate abuse in, 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 the, in the district? Yes. And I think, you know, we've seen what uh, Warren's been saying. We see what AOC has been saying. We've been seeing, you know, what Katie Porter's saying. We have to get big money out of politics and we have to get corporate money out of politics and we got to get real estate dollars out of politics. And in New York, it's particularly interesting because um, the real estate dollars have stopped bills before. They stopped bills that have been, um, you know, really important to New York, such as the good cause eviction bill on the state level by Julia Salazar. Um, this bill would help to prevent some of these in, in, incredible uh, rent increases that we're all experiencing right now in New York. Um, and it would have been something that would have been very essential and crucial to so many folks on 
you know, uh, who are paying rent and on the ground right now. And I think that it's so important for us to um, recognize that, right? That there was a huge rent package that we were able to pass in 2019. I was a part of that effort and it was historic in so many ways. And it really took away a lot of the power of the real estate industry. And how did we do that is because we actually had, um, you know, a lot of members who were not beholden to the real estate industry. We, we had a lot of members who were willing to um, run on that. Right. And to make sure that, you know, we overturned the IDC, that we um, actually had a whole brand new Senate with a real Senate majority uh, being Democrats, right? And I and and Democrats voting with Democrats. That was a nice change, wasn't yep. it? Um, and so I think that you know it was really important for us to make those changes to not be beholden to real estate interest. And this is one of the biggest reasons why you know we have to make sure that we are not taking campaign dollars that can influence um, the uh, you know the real estate industry and the and folks who need to have protections. Um. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the the climate change. Um, there was obviously just a big bill that was um, uh, signed this week. Um, it, you know, from all the conversations I've had with climate activists, uh, net win, um, not, you know, not not the full sandwich, uh, but at least <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a down payment. Uh, I guess um, yeah. you are known uh, apparently in Albany uh, for pushing uh, a Green New Deal uh, spelled with N I O U, uh, <laughs> your last name. Um, what? Uh, just give me your sense of like you know what you think needs to happen. Um, it's not inconceivable that Democrats could hold on to the House I I in the fall. It's not inconceivable. I, I don't know if it was likely, but it, it seems um, at least uh, very possible that they're going to hold the Senate. So you're you know, you're partly there. And, and 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 if the right senators get elected, it's not inconceivable that the um, the the filibuster goes away. I mean, you know, this is this is like a perfect storm type of situation, but perfect storms happen. Uh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Well, in that uh, in the event that something like that happens, like what, what what do you based upon the work that you've done? Like, what do you perceive as like the sort of the most important things that we need to be doing in terms of fighting climate change? Yeah. So I believe that, you know, um, you know, we have just exactly the things that you're talking about. We have to pass the Green New Deal. We have to make sure that um, we are actually looking uh, at trying to further how we're going to actually hold polluters accountable. That's the one thing that's truly missing from this uh, new package the Inflation Reduction Act um, actually brought us. Uh, I think that it is a, a step in the right direction in addressing the climate crisis, but the deal also, um, you know, included a lot of the critical uh, investments in clean energy, manufacturing, environmental justice that we wanted, but it still leaves us a lot more room and more work uh, to do in order to meet our climate goals. And I think that, you know, we have to make sure that polluters pay. We have to stop these corporate loopholes. We have to make sure that we are um, continuing to uh, look through things in an intersectional lens um, because, you know, when I talk about environmental justice, we can't just talk about like environmentalism, right? We have to talk about environmental segregation and um, really what different communities are going through because of the environment. And I think that, you know, we see that a lot within my district. You know, the climate crisis is not a theoretical thing for lower Manhattan and Brooklyn along the waterfront, right? We've walked through those floodwaters. We've seen businesses destroyed by the cost of repairs. We've seen certain neighborhoods really suffer. And then other ones, you know, really, you know, make it okay. I mean, even when you were looking at that shocking photo of lower yeah. Manhattan after Hurricane Sandy, where it was all dark, except for Goldman Sachs. <laughs> it was literally like a shocking picture of what Lower Manhattan became um, right in that moment and what was happening to our neighborhoods. And I think that, you know, our district is already seeing the benefits of certain legislation that we've passed on the state level that I helped to, you know, usher through the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, what we call the CLCPA. Um, we need to fund it more, uh, but I think that we've already started to see some of the benefits, um, such as the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal in in Sunset Park, right? The, the, this district can become, I think, a hub for tech innovation and be a leader 
leader in pushing for investments in climate resiliency. And I think that right now we are uh, needing a Congress member who knows what the needs of the district are and then brings that to Congress and brings home the things that we need. One of the biggest things um, inside of the Green New Deal package that I love is the greening of public housing. So our green uh, New Deal package for public housing is something that I think is direly needed. We need to get those funds to help to build more public housing. And we also need to repeal the Faircloth Amendment, for example, to be able to have more housing because the Faircloth Amendment is this arbitrary thing. And you probably have talked about this on the show, actually. It's the arbitrary thing that says that we cannot build more public housing past the 1991 levels of public housing units. And we have like changed in our population by so much since 1991, increased by so much, and yet we have not built more public housing. And our public housing in New York is the only real, truly affordable, deeply affordable, and permanently affordable housing that we have here. And I think that we need to make sure that we're building more and not less. Yeah, you. Um, I was just about to ask you about NYCHA, and 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 yes. I don't know if people understand that the. Um, and when we talk about public housing in this country, we are largely talking about New York. Uh, yes. I mean, in, in terms of just like sheer numbers of units. Um, and, and and aside from that arbitrary, I mean, I, I don't, you know, what was the logic of of of, of pegging it on 91? Just that this is uh, the, 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 the uh, is this a, uh, so is this something that, um, that needs to happen on a federal level, uh, essentially, to free up these funds, and um, and and how much like NYCHA housing sits in the congressional tenth district, and and how much of a deficit do you perceive there being? Yes. So I actually, um, you know, because 100 percent of my district is inside of it, I know it so well, like one third of my assembly district is actually public housing. People don't realize that here in lower Manhattan, right, is one third of the district is actually, you know, public housing. So in the entire um, District 10, it's about one fourth of the district. So it's actually a lot of units, a lot of families, so many different um, housing complexes. And, you know, we need to fully fund public housing. Since 1991, um, the federal government has clearly divested from public housing. They've taken money and you know, not put it into public housing. They have not put in new dollars for a while now. And so for decades, they've divested from public housing dollars that should be coming into our states to take care of our public housing. And on the state level, I want to say that I'm very proud to have been the person to write the letter, to um, make sure that all of my colleagues who have public housing in their districts sign the letter. And we were able to fight for now um, over a billion dollars in public housing capital dollars coming from the state. And, you know, every single time I go and ask for that state money, um, I am told it is federal responsibility to get, you know, dollars to our public housing. And I try to fight against it as much as I can to get those dollars to our um, community, because I'm always saying, you know, hey, these are residents of our state. These are residents of our communities. And we need to make sure that we take care of them. People cannot live with mold, with um, no hot water, no heat, you know, boilers that are decades old, you know, folks who, you know, have seen, you know, there are people who literally have to heat their house with their ovens open right. and it's dangerous. Like people can literally hurt themselves that way. And I think it's very, very important that, you know, we are actually bringing those dollars. So Maxine Waters has an incredible housing package that she had put into Build Back Better. Obviously we know Build Back Better was not brought back home to us, but um, inside of Build Back Better, there was a really, really good and comprehensive um, housing plan. And I think that we should be able to put this into another bill, perhaps much like we did for the Inflation Reduction Act, right? We could put a different package together, but this housing package was really very good. It was fully funding our public housing with $70 billion. It was also making sure that we could have more funding into Section 8. Um, an influx of dollars into Section 8 would be so helpful for the voucher programs that we have. And Section 8 is very varied. There's a lot of different kinds of affordable housing within Section 8. And then we could, there's also home ownership programs. There's a couple of different programs for like kind of like new Mitchell Lama kind of um, housing deals. And I think that it's really amazing to see a package like that. And it's $370 billion. And I think that that's something that would help to revamp everything. And I think that what we need to do is repeal the Faircloth Amendment, right? Fix the past. Then right now, um, we need to fully fund 
you know, our public housing. And then in the future, we need to also make sure we pass the Green New Deal and then also get, um, you know, a, a funding stream from the from the savings of greening our public housing to make sure that those energy uh, bills um, and the dollars saved from not having to pay those large energy bills will help us to be able to build more public housing. Well, I want people uh, in New York and, and outside of New York to just uh, imagine um, I'm not going to have him on, uh, Dan Goldman, on the program, uh, but I want people to imagine if he would have the depth of knowledge and uh, the passion uh, for uh, that type of uh, 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 public housing uh, program. Uh, well, he said I, it very adamantly that he was against the Green New Deal. So. Yeah, I mean, and and, and um, I, I don't think he has a clue, frankly, about public housing. I don't think it, it even dawns on him, uh, frankly, that it exists or how important it is. And this is one of those situations where uh, what happens in New York sets the tone for uh, public housing across the country uh, because it's very nature. So uh, New York could be um, uh, setting an example in terms of total neglect. Or it could be setting an example of, you know, what we need to do in this country, particularly now with the rise in interest rates and, and the loss of housing that we had in 2008. And we're going to see it again now because of this. We're still uh, underhoused in this country. Uh, such an important issue. Um, uh, so, uh, Yulene, what um, what does it take now just uh, to 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 win in a a shortened primary window, a completely new district? Um, this is a sort of a, um, almost like a one in at least a decade type of event, maybe one in, I don't know how many decades really because of the nature of lifetime. there was, there was multiple different congressional districts. Uh, this district, uh, you know, half of it was in Staten Island, uh, three months ago for uh, like two weeks, essentially. Um, and so what does it take? to uh to win in this situation and you know like w w what do you need from folks i mean i think it takes a coalition of folks to you know get the vote out it takes um all of our volunteers on the ground we have right now so many volunteers hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers are coming out for us um so it's really really about making sure that people get the word out you know folks can find uh, more information about my campaign at newfornewyork.com and i owe you for new york.com and i think that you know people can sign up to phone bank people can sign up to text bank and people can make sure that they are getting involved because that's what it takes and i'm betting on the people of this uh, amazing district to be able to make sure that we can get this done. Voter turnout is going to be key. This is the bottom line. That's why uh, uh, Goldman and his um, uh, real estate buddies are spending literally um, uh, millions upon millions of millions of dollars in a three month race, essentially, That's right. uh, uh, because it is really just going to be ultimately about voter turnout. Uh, August 23rd uh, in New York uh, City. Um, people are thinking about going back to school or they're, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I imagine Goldman's not going to go out to the Hamptons on that day, but uh, it's it's unclear. Um, we will put a link uh, to your website at uh, majority.fm and in the podcast and YouTube description. Uh, thanks so much uh, for joining us uh, today and uh, and and good luck. Uh, you got three you. days, four days to go, I guess. Yes. And, you know, hopefully everybody can come and join our giant event that's happening with Jabari, with Shahana and with Tiffany. So it'll be really, really fun. And I hope that folks will come out. All right. Uh, Thank you, uh, uh, Yulene, really appreciate uh, your time today. Thank you, Sam.